Charles, 79, could no longer live in his country house because his niece had decided to commit him to a nursing home. His greedy niece stopped him from fulfilling his dying wish to leave his house to a poor single mother. But when the young mother entered the house, she discovered something that changed her life forever. Charles had been living alone in his small but cozy country house since his wife's death. He had always been able to take care of himself and had never needed anyone else's help. Nonetheless, as he grew older, the difficulty of living alone increased. Even at the age of 79, he tried to keep the house and yard clean, although his energy and health could no longer keep up with his will. Charlie was changing logs in the fireplace when the ringing of his phone echoed through the house. On the other end of the line was his niece, who raised the same old subject again. Uncle, we shouldn't even be talking about this. You need to go to a nursing home right now. There will be health professionals and everything else ready to take care of you in the best way possible, the young lady said respectfully. And she persisted, claiming that the older man would have activities to do and other people around him, so he would no longer be alone. Charlie listened to all the arguments and eventually decided to agree he would live in a nursing home. In any case, he knew that his niece, Sophia, would insist until he agreed. Since the death of his only son, Charlie had no one else in his life except for Sophia, who, despite not visiting him, was rarely out of touch, always trying to persuade him to move out of his home. The elderly man agreed, but first he wanted to know what the young woman planned to do with the country house and its small plot. It included a lovely garden that his late wife had planted and that he had lovingly maintained over the years. Sophia listened carefully and decided that it would be best to sell the place, and Charlie could keep all the money. And well, of course I won't mind if you leave me a small commission, said the young woman in a playful yet mischievous tone. However, it seemed that Charlie had everything ready since he had agreed to go to the nursing home. He only had one wish, which was straightforward. He wanted to give his house to Emily, a neighbor. She was a single mother with two bright children, but due to the tragic consequences of life, she was living in a crumbling house that the city might condemn at any time. Even with a low rent, she was on the verge of eviction due to late payments. Since the first day she met Charlie, Emily had shown that she was honest and kind, so Charlie felt he had to help her. With two young children and no one to depend on, he felt such a wonderful woman should not have to live in such unhealthy circumstances. Sophia, however, didn't seem to like the notion and quickly expressed her displeasure to her uncle. She suggested that Emily might be a gold digger and that she didn't trust her. Sophia promised to see what she could do to satisfy her uncle's request, though to reassure him and win him over to the idea of living in the nursing home. But the older man's niece and the single mother were unaware that Charlie would leave something in the cottage worth much more than the house itself. Emily was young, only 27, but the abandonment of her husband and the death of her mother, her only family, led her to a deep depression that hindered both her professional life and the well-being of her two children. Emily and Charlie had known each other for almost two years. It had all started when the older man had been returning from the supermarket with an overstuffed shopping bag. Emily's eldest son rushed to assist the older man, carrying the loads for him. Then Emily and the kids assisted Charlie in carrying everything to his house. The young mother had no idea that the small act of kindness would herald the start of a significant change in her life. Emily had been assisting Charlie with minor tasks and cooking since then. Since his wife's death, the older man had been eating poorly. He'd never been a good cook and he never planned his meals. Despite his repeated request, Emily never accepted any payment. She thought of her late father when she talked to Charlie, and it made her happy to help him. Furthermore, she had observed that Charlie had a solitary and frugal existence, completely alone and without luxuries, and she was content with the small meals that the older man prepared for the young mother and her children, using what was left of his food. The years passed and the two loners became unlikely friends. The older man occasionally invited the woman and her children to his house for lunch. They respected each other. Emily listened carefully to all of his advice as if the older man had become a mentor to her. Charlie had even started to notice that the signs of his depression, which were caused by the death of his wife, were getting better. 
Meanwhile, Emily enjoyed the feeling that she was helping someone in need, while at the same time she had someone she could talk to about life. Someone to whom she could vent. A true friend. When Charlie told Emily he was moving to a nursing home, he couldn't hold back the tears. He explained that his niece had been calling every week for three years to get him out of the country house, and he just didn't have the energy to argue about it anymore. As far as Charlie was concerned, he'd be happy living in his house until his last breath. After all, that house had been built by him and his wife with their own hands. But in this life, we can't have everything we want, can we? said the gentleman, resigned to his fate. Emily hugged him and told him he could always count on her for help. He thanked her for all she had done. Emily, I appreciate you making me feel useful again. Charlie was transferred to a nursing home within a month. His niece, Sophia, took the initiative, chose the location, and quickly completed the paperwork. She didn't care about the older man's likes and dislikes because she hadn't asked him. Emily didn't get a chance to see Charlie move out. She only had a hunch that the older man had left because she never saw him again at the market she frequented or in the vicinity of his country house. Her children missed playing with the older man, who had been very close to them in recent years. So Emily went to the older man's country house from time to time, hoping to meet him there and say goodbye properly. But it wasn't Charlie whom she found. When the young mother came to visit, Sophia, his niece, was inside the house. She appeared to be stuffing dusty items into worn out boxes. Emily approached her, thinking Charlie had told his niece about her to introduce herself or even offer assistance. However, as she introduced herself and inquired about Charlie's whereabouts, Get out of here, filthy! I know very well who you are, and I don't even want you to come near my backyard. Unlike my uncle, I won't keep giving you money to support your children or any of your addictions. Emily was stunned by the rudeness of Charles's niece. She remained silent for a moment, unsure of how to react or what to say. Sophia ignored Emily's attempts to reason with her. She then practically kicked her off the property, threatening to call the police if she did not leave immediately. Emily was sickened by Sophia's rudeness, but she tried her best to overcome her shock. Deciding that she would try to find out for herself where Charlie was staying, Emily left her children at the community daycare and went early the next day to find Charlie. She knew there were only three nursing homes in the city, two of which were closer to the neighborhood, and the third in a remote region. Her hopes were dashed after visiting the first two nursing homes, and her mood had never been lower, since Charlie could be anywhere in the city or the country. After all, how could Sophia be sure that she hadn't placed her uncle in the most remote location possible? Emily distrusted his niece's nature and character, so she was prepared for anything. After missing a bus and walking for hours to reach the farthest nursing home in the city, Emily arrived at the reception, almost fainting from exhaustion. She asked if Charlie was a resident there and whether he could receive a visit. She asked that way as to not appear to be uninformed and to be shooed out of the place, just like she had been from the old man's country house. And to her surprise, the receptionist said that indeed the man was and that he could receive visits, but only from his family. It's okay, I'm his niece, the young mother said without flinching, hoping to see her friend finally. Oh yes, I was finding it strange to have only heard your voice all these weeks. You finally came to visit your uncle. I guess he could use some company, the nurse said. That made it clear to Emily that after the hospitalization, Sophia never looked for her uncle again. Emily hastened down the hallways as the visiting hours were about to end so she could enjoy the time she would still have with Charlie. In addition, she had to pick up her kids from the daycare in a short while. Everything was going well, and she was excited to see her friend, but she was shocked by what she saw. Her old friend appeared more ill and frail than ever before, as he lay in bed with a dejected expression. The old man managed to nod his head and smile with his eyes when he saw Emily, and he asked the nurse to sit him down so he could talk to her. Emily sat down on the chair next to Charlie's bed, and he began to ask slowly how the woman was doing and about her children. Emily hated to break bad news, even more so for a man in that state, but she told the truth that even she herself would not want to believe. She also said that her youngest son had been sick for a few weeks, however the doctors still hadn't identified what he had, which worried her even more. As he listened to the woman, Charlie appeared to gain strength, as if he were making a significant decision about his future in private. When he finally managed to whisper in Emily's ear what he wanted to say so much, the woman completely changed. 
causing her expression of concern to give way to a face of surprise. The young mother was utterly shocked by what she had heard and exclaimed, There's no way such a thing is possible. You've got to be kidding me, Charlie. Charlie chuckled a few times, relieved to have it off his chest. He then shook her hand and said, I would have left it to my son, but he unfortunately left before I could give him this gift. So now it's yours. Use that to take care of your child so he stays well and healthy. The nurse then entered the room and informed Emily that visiting hours were over. Emily got up and looked at the bed where the old man was and smiled, waving. Don't expect to get rid of me so easily, Charlie. I'll be back again tomorrow, only earlier, and we'll go over everything again. The plans appeared to be perfect, and longing began as soon as she stepped out the door but she had no idea that these would be her final words to her dear friend. The next day, Emily repeated the same routine as the day before. She dropped her kids off at the daycare and went straight for the nursing home. This time, she had a pasta pot, Charlie's favorite dish, hidden in her purse. Emily was shocked to learn that Charlie had died early in the morning when she arrived at the nursing home. The same nurse who had surprised her the day before asked if the older man's other niece had not told her since they had called her in the early morning hours. Without answering, Emily just hurried away, with a sad look of disappointment. Charlie had been her best friend for years, and now he was gone for good. The woman returned to her home completely in pieces to find yet another eviction notice taped to the door. After taking some time alone to absorb the news, she headed towards the cottage. When walking to the place, she was taken by mixed feelings. After all, according to Charlie's last wish for her, the country house would be hers. But unfortunately, she would no longer have the elderly man to share her joy. Emily went in and sat down on the couch after getting a spare key from under the rug, where they always left it. Despite her best efforts to unwind, she could not stop thinking about Charlie and how he had died alone, without anyone by his side. Although she had many memories of the late friend playing with her children over the years, now it just seemed like an empty house. To the children, Charlie was like a grandfather they never had. For a second, she remembered that Charlie had whispered in her ear in their last conversation and went to the old man's room and pushed his bed aside, finding a small trap door in the floor. Thinking it was just another joke from her dear friend, she crouched down and opened it slowly. But Emily couldn't believe what her eyes were seeing. Inside the box were seven gold bars that were so gleaming that they appeared fake for a split second. Emily had only seen that in bank robbery movies in her life. That was Charlie's life savings, which explained why he lived with such austerity. Charlie intended to leave it to his son. Still, after his son died, the older man saw the gold as useless, except for the excellent use that Emily would now put it to. Emily was shaking nervously. She didn't know whether to put those bars away again or run home with them. She thought for a few moments and removed the gold bars and placed them in a more resistant box. Went to the door and as if everything was clear in her mind, she put her plan into practice. First of all, the next day, Emily decided to clean the house completely and hung a picture of Charlie near the door, placing a candle in honor of her dear friend. There was enough space for her children to settle in, but in just two days, what seemed perfect would be over. That's because Sophia, Charlie's niece, arrived at the country house and was horrified to see Emily and her son living there. Outraged, she asked what she thought she was doing there. Emily was forthright. She told Sophie about her visit to Charlie in the last day of his life and the promise he made that the house and everything inside now belonged to her and her children. Sophia mocked Emily, accusing her of being a gold digger and even suggesting that she might have mental problems for thinking such a thing. Do you think my uncle would leave this house to a stranger and two brats? Sophia immediately called the police and 20 minutes later, a policeman knocked at the door of the country house and listened to both sides of the story. The officer spoke politely and respectfully to Emily. Madam, for this to be valid, I need to see the will that proves this house is truly yours. If not, please leave the premises immediately. The young mother was speechless. Her children witnessed everything. Emily had to remove her children's belongings and move them out of the house. So she did so carefully. Sophia stated that this was not the end of her actions. She would continue to report the young mother for trespassing and do everything she could to put her behind bars. If Charlie's niece had known what would happen weeks later, she would have been less arrogant. As a result of Sophia's complaint that Emily had broken into her house, the young mother had to answer to the charges. However, since she had no criminal record and had her two children who depended exclusively on her, Emily was released, but required to find a public defender to defend her case. 
With the notice, she had received a restraining order. Emily was told that she could not go near the cottage, so she did not even see the for sale sign stuck in the backyard of the house. Sophia hadn't bothered to remove Charlie's personal items from the house, leaving everything for whomever wanted to buy it. The first offers came a few weeks later. Andrew, a lawyer from a well-known law firm, was one of them. He gave Sophia a call and expressed interest in purchasing the house, but the man said he would pay in cash because the place was simple and wasn't worth much. Since the other offers included payment plans, Sophia accepted Andrew's cash offer immediately. She planned for the man to get the house key in two weeks. The young lady explained that she could not turn over the cottage until she removed all of the old junk. But Andrew assured her that everything would be fine. He would accept the location exactly as it was because he was in a hurry. Sophia could not have been happier on the phone and arranged to meet him and hand over the keys and receive her money the following day. At 9 a.m. on a Wednesday, the lawyer arrived in a luxury car with dark tinted glass. He got out, introduced himself as the person responsible for contacting the niece and said he was happy to close the negotiations. Andrew then opened a suitcase containing the cash and let Sophia count every bill in it. After looking at each pack, Sophia signed the papers that Andrew gave her and told him how happy she was with his purchase. But the man, with a piercing gaze and a serious expression, looked at Sophia and spoke, I thank you for everything, but I think it would be better if you congratulated the real new owner of the house, or rather mistress. I'm just a lawyer who came to make sure everything was properly legalized. It was then that the passenger door of the luxury car opened and a woman wearing expensive and impeccable clothes got out. Sophia looked up. She seemed to recognize her from somewhere, but she was confused and unsure. It was when she sat down at the negotiating table that Sophia's doubts fell away. To her utter horror, it was Emily. This is Emily, my client, and the brand new owner of this picturesque country home. Now, if you don't mind, would you please hand her the keys? Sophia was so shocked that she was unable to move. She experienced a mixture of humiliation, coercion, and total confusion. Sophia handed the house keys with the reluctance and rage, unable to believe what was happening before her eyes. Then Emily said what she had meant to say for a while. You were only interested in what your uncle could give you, never in his true wishes, and as a result of you, he died alone in a nursing home. Living with this guilt will not be easy. I'm sorry you didn't bother to discover what a remarkable person he was, but I'm also relieved that he did not have to live with you. Additionally, I'm glad you met my attorney because we'll soon be suing you for elder coercion and mistreatment. Get ready to lose the money you just received. See you in court. And that's how Emily said goodbye to Sophia that day closing the door of her house while looking into her furious eyes. Emily promised to respect the country house that Charles and his wife had worked so hard to build. She promised the lawyer that she would raise her children with pride in that location. The young mother relit the candle beneath Charlie's photograph. That night, she slept soundly, something she hadn't done in years, knowing that her deceased old friend's wishes had finally come true. If you like the story, please leave a thumbs up, and this other video on the screen now will probably move you as well. Good session, and I'll see you in the next video.